Have you ever wanted a way to keep your internet secure or maybe access uh, your network remotely? Or maybe you just want to secure your network while you're traveling and enjoying your coffee in various coffee shops. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can do that using an open source project called WireGuard Easy. Let's get started. So as I mentioned on the outset, we're going to talk today about an open source program called WireGuard Easy. Now this is built inside what's called a Docker container, which basically is a nice little package and makes it very, very easy to deploy and get set up. And this uses exactly what this name is, is WireGuard as a VPN solution to secure your internet access. And what that basically means is as you travel around, when you connect this, you're using a secure connection because all of your traffic is encrypted. And that keeps it from prying eyes from looking at what you're doing or where you're going. And the nice part about this is you don't need to rely on any company to set this up. You can do this all on your own. All you need is a spare computer or maybe a cloud resource account if you want to set it up in the cloud. Well, today we're going to set ours up actually in the cloud. And I want to show you this. Here's the project page and it's on GitHub. It's WireGuard Easy and it's literally WG-Easy. And this little project talks you through, has the documentation, everything on how to get this set up and running. So I'm actually gonna be setting this up in a cloud service called Vaulter. The reason I pick Vaulter is really because it's inexpensive. What we're about to deploy only costs about six bucks a month to me and it makes it nice and easy. It's a very easy service to use to spin up a server. So we'll go up here to deploy and we'll start building our server out. Now you can use any resource cloud service you want, doesn't matter. Azure, AWS, GCP, any cloud service or co-location, or even if you want to just set it up in your home, you can do that too. However, if you set them up at your home or your office, you'll have to open up some network ports in order for it to be able to communicate or you know allow access to the firewall of your network. With this, it's directly attached to the internet, so I don't have to worry about that. And I can just control access using the built-in firewall that's part of Linux. So I'll pick a location. Why don't we pick Atlanta, Georgia? Why not? And we're going to use a shared CPU because I don't need anything dedicated. That's more expensive than I want and more power than I need. We'll stick with Debian because the universal operating system is awesome. We'll pick the smallest virtual server. Again, it's only $6 a month. We don't need IPv6. I don't need backups because if this nukes, then it's easy enough for me to spin up a new one. I do want a limited user login though, however, because that's best practice and it keeps things secure. If I want to, I can use my SSH key here, but in this case, I'm not going to. And then we'll just call this WireGuard easy test just to make it a simple deployment. We'll hit deploy now. And as this is working on building, again, you can install this wherever you like. I'm just using Volter. By all means, feel free. If you want to use Volter too, you can. But if you've got this in another cloud service, you just follow whatever its recommended steps are in building your Linux server. You can also use just about any Linux version out there that you want. If you don't want to use Debian, you can use Ubuntu or Fedora or Red Hat or any of them. I just picked Debian because that's one of my favorites. Now we got our server up and going, it looks like. We'll go in here. And the nice part about this is it gives us our IP address, our username, and our password for our server. We see how much we're spending on this. Now, there are times where I've started these up and they're not exactly all the way up yet. So we can actually click here and view the console. And we'll see if this server is actually up yet or not. So as we can see, our server is slowly booting up here. We'll give it a little bit more time. All right, our server is up. Now we can log in here if we want to through the browser, but I prefer to actually SSH into it. So we'll open up our PowerShell and we'll just throw it over here to the side, make it easy. And actually, why don't we do that? We'll uh, put this on the side and then throw our browser on the other side. That way we can easily copy paste between them. So what we use is SSH and we want to log in as our Linux user. And 
we'll grab our IP address here. And we'll want to say yes to the fingerprint. And now we need our password. So we'll grab our password that it generated for us. Type that in and there we go. Now we're in our Debian Linux system. So what do we do? First things first, we need to install Docker. That way we can deploy our WireGuard Easy instance. The easiest way of doing this in Debian, just use apt, the Debian package manager. So we'll do sudo apt install. And then we'll want to install Docker. And I think it's Ubuntu, it's docker.io is the package. It, it's hard when you run different Linux distributions. All of them have their own little nuances. So just make sure when you're using whatever flavor of Linux you want to use, if you're not using Debian, make sure you're using the appropriate packages because we want to install Docker and Docker Compose. The reason we do both is because we want the full capabilities of Docker as we deploy this. All right, so we got that installed. Let's go ahead and clear our terminal. So we've working with something nice and clean. The next thing we want to do after we install Docker is we want to put WireGuard Easy on our system. So we're just going to create a file and we'll start WireGuardEasy.sh. We'll call it that. We'll go into edit mode and we'll add our Docker container configuration. So the first thing I like to do here is I We'll, we'll want to eliminate all of our lines there so we're not doing something crazy. There we go. Now I'll want to go down to here. We'll eliminate that line because we don't need a different language other than English. Now let's go ahead and put our IP address in here. Now what we want to do here is we actually want to change this password hash. Now I've tried using the password hash method that they have documented here and I haven't been able to get it to work. So if you're watching this and you know how to get it to work, by all means, I'd love to hear your comments down below. However, as of making this video, nothing I tried worked. So we're going to use actually the deprecated method, which is just password. So it makes this password in clear text, which is not good, but you know, we're going to do the best we can. We'll use a super duper secret password of password one, two, three, four, because I mean, yeah, security. And we're going to go ahead and leave the default ports in here of 51821 and 51820. We could change these to different ports if we wanted to. But you know what? This looks good and I know this will work. So we'll go ahead and save our configuration. Now what we want to do is we will want to add change, use change mod and give our little script that we just built executing power. And this is the first time we're running it. We need to sudo dot forward slash start wireguard easy dot sh. Let's launch it. So as we can see, it's going ahead and pulling the, our Docker container and building it out for us. There we go. Now we'll grab our IP address. If you remember right, we've got our ports here. So we'll connect to this 51821 port. So I'll put this in here. And here it is. Now it's asking us to log in for the very first time. And we'll put in our super secret password. And yay, we got logged in. Now this interface is very, very easy. To add a client, you simply click new client. 
we give it a name. We'll just call this test. We'll hit create and it automatically assigns us an IP address. Now this is an IP address that we would use if we're connecting to different systems through our WireGuard server here. Now it's 10.8.0.2 and what we'll do is we will, we want to download our test.conf file. And next what we want to do is we want to install WireGuard on our computer. So if we search for WireGuard, you can go here to the WireGuard website and we just go to installation and we want to download Windows installer. Once we download this and install it, it puts an icon down here in our corner that says WireGuard and we see that it's inactive and we can just open it up here. From there, we just import our tunnel, select our test.conf and here we are, we're ready to go. We've got a public key and our pre-shared key is enabled. So, and there's our endpoint. So if we hit activate, we get connected. And now we're connected to our WireGuard instance. Now, if I hit refresh, since we're piping through our WireGuard instance, it's not going to, to work. It's actually going to time out, but I'm going to deactivate it. And then I'm going to refresh the screen and I'll show that we were connected here. Now we just disconnected. So if we refresh again here in a second or so, it'll, it'll drop off. There's a little bit of lag on the interface. If we have an iPhone or Android device, we can hit the QR code here and we'll be able to scan the QR code and be able to access the server. I don't mind having this up here because it's all going to be deleted at the end of this video anyway, but know that you can do that. Now, one thing that I do recommend when it comes to any of your servers is we do want to lock down as much as possible. So make sure you're using good, safe, secure passwords. So we want to make sure that when we build this, we do want to have some good security practices in mind. So make sure you use good, safe, secure passwords, something long, easy to remember. Use your password manager. Something else to keep in mind, and we haven't touched it in this video. You can use something like a UFW to lock down your ports. Now, obviously with this particular instance, I'd have to open up any ports because it automatically did that for me. But if you wanted to, you could override those and then lock down, like for example, your management interface. So only you from your home internet or another IP address, whether it's your work or home or both, you can lock those down to where the management interface, which is unencrypted, is only accessed through those IP addresses. And that levels the field of attack, so to speak, because that makes it to where only those IP addresses would be able to access the interface. Something else you can do, I do want to point out on here, we'll go back to our sandbox and open up our web browser a little more. If you look here, it does walk you through how to hash this password. Now, obviously with me be using a limited account and the passwords in clear text, as long as they don't have access to the server, it's not a big deal. However, with that being in mind, it's always best to use a password hash regardless. That keeps things much more secure if your server's ever compromised. But if it is, you just trash it and start up a new one and change your password. Nice part about a password manager. The other thing is, I highly recommend down here at the bottom, you can tie this back with something like a pie hole, which we're going to have a future video on pie holes, what they do, as well as setting up SSL. So you can access your management interface using an encrypted connection. So all these practices are good, but don't forget some of the basics, such as keeping your server up to date. Don't just put it out there and forget about it. Make sure you keep it up to date. Make sure you take time. If you're using something like Azure, the nice part is you can let them keep it up to date for you. Now, Vulture, I don't think can do that, but just check your cloud documentation or if it's just your own, put in a recurring event once a month to go in there, keep everything up to date, restart your server or script it, and then just make sure you monitor that and check it on occasion so that uh, you know things are, are safe and secure because you're channeling your internets through this device. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.